Uh, sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm a full stack web developer. I've been doing this for about 10 years. I started out mostly doing Django, uh, both front end and back end. And then about five years ago, I started doing single page apps along with everyone else. Um, since then, settled into mostly working with React as my uh, language of choice, but I've tried a variety of different front end frameworks. Um, in preparation for this talk, I kept looking for other presentations on like doing React forms. And one thing I heard a lot was like, people are always saying that forms are hard in React. And that just sort of shut, like, to me seems counterintuitive because back when I was doing just Django, forms were always this like, you know, just a afterthought. It wasn't that complex, but single page apps have had so much complexity um, that it's now become like a large part of what we do. Uh, so today I'm going to show you React JSON schema form, which is a React framework. Um, it uses something called JSON schema to generate forms on the fly. I think it limits the complexity of forms quite a bit. Um, it's not for everyone, but I just want to give a brief overview, see if it's something you could all be interested in. Uh, let's see, share. And let me say, cool. Uh, let me say that I've been you know, working with React JSON schema form for about two years now. I use it on pretty much all my projects. Um, if you decide to try it yourself and you have any questions, like feel free to hit me up. Uh, it can be a little bit intimidating at first. Uh, the first thing you should really look at, though, is this is the documentation. This is the playground for it. Um, this really outlines like most of what React JSON schema form is capable of. Uh, you specify a rather than like typing out your individual inputs, you specify a JSON schema, and then this is used to generate the form. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so I highly recommend just come here and like play around with this playground. You can really see how this all sort of works and whether or not it's right for you. Um, yeah, onto my talk. So first, I want to. Uh, please forgive me. I want to first start by talking about a little bit of Python. I want to show like what how forms worked in Django and how I think it's like much more simple. Um, and then I want to present like why I think forms got sort of complex in React and how I think React JSON schema forms sort of like simplifies that complexity a bit. So uh, Django time. Usually in Django, you start by specifying models. So a model is like a database. Uh, it's a table in your database, right? So here we're creating a table called user address. Um, it's got these fields, there's the user it's pointing to, the type of the address. It could be either, you know, residence, business, other. Um, and then address one, address two, city, state, zip code. Um, and then at this point, you have a table in your database. Uh, so let's say you want to make a form to populate this. You create a form. Um, and basically, this is all a form is in Django. You just like specify this a model form, meaning it's going to interact with the model. And you specify which fields on that model you have and then you're done. Um, literally in the template, it looks like this. So um, you can actually just do like at this point, you could just go like form and it would print out like a default HTML. Um, instead, usually what you do is you iterate over the individual fields. You know, here we're iterating over the different types of uh, errors, like form wide errors, then hidden fields, then visible fields. Um, and then one by one, you print each of them. And the nice thing about this is every single field, like this will work for pretty much any field in a Django site. So you don't have a lot of code repetition. You don't find yourself typing like a million different inputs um, and really helps like simplify the code. Obviously this isn't gonna cover everything, but if you wanna do something exceptional, like if you wanna deviate from this model is when you start creating lots of code, right? It doesn't create a lot of code just to get like the simple basic form. So now let's look at like, this is a tutorial I found on how to do forms in React. Um, and this is not to be critical of like this style. I understand like it gels for some people. It just kind of like gets under my skin. Um, like basically you start by, this is like some uh, boilerplate to like maintain state using hooks. That's fine. Uh, and you have like a submit function and then you type out each of the individual inputs one at a time. You can see like you have to specify like the label for every single one, its name, its type, its value. Every single one has an on change function you specify. Um, and then you have to do this for every single field, which makes this form like very, very long. And this doesn't cover like, you know, form validation. So you need another layer of state in order to cover like, uh, in order to save the errors. Um, so this can get, grow out of hand very, very quickly. Um, when I was prepping for this talk, I was gonna like look through some of my old code and see if I could find like an example of like a form that's written like this. And all of them were just like 300 line files that I felt was like too embarrassing. And that's why I'm picking on this poor person's tutorial. So please don't think I'm being like that cruel because this is like, Definitely, this is like the starting point of how I think like React forms get off the rails. This isn't like how it's off the rails yet. So let's look at like what React JSON schema form does instead. Um, so 
To do React JSON schema form, you first specify a schema. I'm actually going to comment out this one. We'll get back to this in a second. Um, yeah, cool. So you specify a schema object. And this type is an object. You specify a series of properties. In this case, you have first name, last name, email. Um, you have to specify a title for all of them. So it's like a little bit redundant, but whatever. That's like nothing too huge. Um, you know, you specify the type for each of them. This could be an integer. It could be a string. Um, and it could be an array or an object. We'll get that in a second. Um, and then, you know, you import. This is my next step of the demo. One second, let me uncomment this stuff. Um, so you use the form from React JSON schema form. And then you just pass a schema into that and then some sort of on submit. And let's see what this gets you out of the gate. Uh, and I broke something. Live coding, yay. No, what I do? I'm sorry. That's it. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Here's the form. So we have first name, last name, email. And then if I fill these in, hit submit, it alerts the JSON representation. You'll notice that password isn't actually changed here. I'll get to why that is in a second. But basically, the schema only represents like how the data structure, right? This is how your database thinks of the data, essentially. Or this is what you're going to send in a post to the server when you submit this form. Um, so. The cool thing is, like, I think right now this is already sort of readable because you have your schema separate from your form logic, um, you know, your HTML, your re Redux, whatever. So I think it's like a good way to segregate code. But additionally, because this is a JSON structure, you'd imagine that if your app was this like Python app that I showed you earlier, um, you could conceivably create an endpoint, this like API slash schema slash user address form that outputs the actual JSON form itself. And now it's very powerful because your front end just has to know like, hey, this form hooks into this endpoint. And then any changes in the back end will be represented on the front end immediately. If you need to add or remove fields or change anything, anything that's represented by that schema object can be like synced that way. So the other thing which like this has really, this is really powerful this that like other form uh, frameworks are sort of lacking is you can do um, nested objects. So, too many selects, sorry. OK, so this is a nested object. You'll notice this is type array, and then it has this property items, and that has type object. It has some required fields and properties. So that looks very, very similar to up here. Type object required properties, right? So this is actually like a sub object inside the thing. You now have a nested JSON structure. So let's change that. Um, so you can see referrals here. It starts with nothing. If you do, if you fill this out, uh, let's just add another one for good measure. ARST is my keyboard's version of ASDF. Everyone's always confused by that. Um, so if that was a question in my mind. So I've hit submit. Now you can see referrals are actually a nested object. Um, and then by default, it comes with like this, like ability to change the order, which is kind of neat. Um, another sort of like feature of this is they use Bootstrap class names uh, by default. So I pulled in Bootstrap from a CDN. Um, but if by some chance you're using a framework that uses similar class names to Bootstrap, like this can be a very easy style. Um, yeah. So that's the basics. Um, now we're going to go into like more exotic use cases. A lot of people who have like recommended tries to think like, oh, no, I can never use that. Like I need to, I need to customize forms too much. And remember, this is just sort of like the default level customization, sort of like with the Django form. Like this is just gets you out of the door with like the simplest thing. So there's no question of like rewriting a million lines of code just to have like a form that just sorts of forms do. So try to speed through this part. Um, so using account form now instead, let me open that file. So the account form, um, I'm now using, I add this UI schema. Uh, UI schema is think of it like similar to schema, only schema defines like what the database sees. UI schema defines what the front end sees. So this is how you can do things like make it autofocus on a field or you know here like this, like add a class name. So mm, my HMR broke, sorry. Yay, live code. Okay. 
so yeah, you can see like I had an alert class named for that. Or um, also this is where you add like, you know, things like help text or description, things that aren't necessarily a part of the actual like schema itself. Um, then additionally, you can do things like, you know, remove the label or this is like a add a custom widget. That's a lovely typo there. So this is like if I write a custom checkbox widget, this is just literally the example. There it is. This is the example taken from the site, but you can see like, this is how a custom widget looks like. It just takes in props, has this like on change that you pass back to like tell the form that something's been changed. And otherwise you can put pretty much anything you want in here to create custom widgets. So usually when I do this, I end up with like maybe half my fields or custom things I did because you know designers want like some crazy stuff. But the nice thing is that like the actual like structure of how a form operates, how the validation happens, the flow and stuff like that, that's all handled by the form. Um, and then the last thing people probably ask is like, you know, usually you don't have just a form that alerts form data. You need some sort of like, um, you need to do what's called a controlled form, which is where um, you specify an on change. And with an input, you specify an on change and a value. With a form, you specify an on change and then form data. So what I've done with this is now form data is controlled by the state of the form and on change is now called every single time the form updates. So I've taken the state of the form entirely out of the form's control, and now I control that. Um, and I believe I'm out of time. Uh, I'm not sure if we're doing questions or not, but I want to kind of wrap this up just in case. Um, but the, uh, yeah, like additionally, there's like ways you can do like validation or custom errors. There's also like various levels, like if you come to the actual documentation page, um, like recommend you look to like form props. Like this is like, customizing the actual form itself. Like there's things like field template, which defines like, it's basically the component that renders the field around the widget with the label and, you know, help text and stuff like that and the error. And then the actual, like um, the widget itself is like on a per field basis. So like field templates, how you like override basically the entire HTML of the form. Um, and then there's, you know, error list, you can specify outside errors that come from like servers and stuff like that. So it's really is like, like this is, you know, it would take me, two or three hours, you can write a week long class on like how to use everything about this. So it really can customize in any way you want. The important thing is it takes like a lot of that initial, I want a boring contact form with no bells and whistles. Like that requires like zero creativity. There's no surprises. You don't have to write anything like super complex to do that. So yeah, I think that's about my time. So I will end it there. Did I lose everyone? No, we're here. <laughs> awesome job. That was, that was really cool. Um, Thank you. I know, uh, like having, having dealt with some forms, uh, recently, it's just like always such a pain to try to like hand roll all of that stuff yourself. So seeing a tool like that, that just really like takes the, a lot of the complexity out of it and makes it easier. It sounds like super, super useful. Yeah. And like I said, I'm on the, uh, I'm on the discord. I'm on the Philly dev Slack. If anybody wants to give this a try, like I'm always down to chat code. So hit me up. So, uh, we do want to take some questions from chat here. Uh, I do have, I have a question from Ryan. Uh, have you ever used uh, Formic or Yup? And how does this compare? So um, I have used Formic, I haven't used Yup. I mean, it's, it's JavaScript, there's a new one every weekend, right? Yeah. Um, Formic, you you specify, like you hand specify each individual field. Um, it's, it's, yeah, for me, it, it's like there's, there's a level of how much do you want to do explicitly? How much do you want to hand off the form to do it, do it yourself? Mm -hmm. um, if you don't like the magic of like you pass it a schema and then it just does everything else for you unless you tell it to do something different, like Formic is more how you'd have like more granular. So I would say like if there's a spectrum between like, um, you know, handwrite everything versus like give it a skeleton of data and let it go to town. Uh, Formic is like more on the handwrite everything, but still like a lot less boilerplate, a lot less, uh, a lot less effort than trying to do everything on your own. Very cool, very cool. Do we have any other questions from the Twitch chat? Just coming through. Um, we got a question. Could you explain how the UI JSON could update the backend model? Um, you mean like how do we, uh, I don't quite understand what you mean by that. Um, so like UI schema is, is, uh, is just like for presentation, right? Um, basically like what you have is, you have to have a post endpoint where the form is gonna send the data to. Um, what I'm suggesting is you would make it so that post endpoint, when it's not post, if it's just get, it would respond with like the schema itself. I'm not sure if that answered the question. I'm sorry. Answered it for me. 
Let me see. Did, uh, I'm just kind of looking at the chat to see if that kind of, that kind of did it. I'm looking for other questions here. Does anyone else have any questions? Not so much a question, but if you want to generate a JSON schema to test with, stoplight.io makes a visual API designer that's super helpful and it's free for small teams. Oh, cool. That's cool. Yeah, JSON schema is like, this is definitely, I actually, in the process of doing this, I tried to find a talk on React JSON schema forum on YouTube. And um, the only thing that came up was a talk about a different JSON schema app at React Adelphia <laughs> from August. So yeah, it's like, it's a, a common approach. I just, it hasn't taken off as much. It's like, I think Formic has like 800,000 weekly downloads and React JSON schema forms like 80,000. So mm -hmm. it's like one tenth as popular maybe. Right, right. Oh, I should also add this one's maintained by Mozilla. So got it. So you got some, you got some, uh big players kind of in the in the game there yeah 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 that's definitely always important to think about the staying power of the the tools you use especially in uh <laughs> especially like you know in in our ecosystem where like things kind of come and go very very rapidly cool somebody has said that jason schema just ratified that's awesome i didn't realize that it was official now nice oh wow okay very cool um this might be super basic question but what is a schema um schema refers to like it's it's like a, a recipe for a database right so your schema is basically saying like the first name is a string of this length right um schema just refers to any sort of representation of like describing a data structure um prop types is a schema TypeScript is essentially like creating schema for your arguments on a function. So think of this as like a, a different approach to that as well. Only in this case, you're doing it just for the form itself and like for the data structure the form produces. Cool. Thank you for that answer. Nice. Okay. Last call for questions. Anything else from you, from y'all? All right, Chris. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time here and, and yeah. the talk that you gave. Thank you.